Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Happic. In the last episode, I used all the evidence I gathered during the investigation, and I managed to find the truth of what actually happened in Makoto's room during the class trial. And I found out that Leon was Saika's murderer. However, Saika wasn't really a blameless victim in the, enti in the entire incident, because she ended up tricking Makoto into switching rooms with her in order to try to frame him for a murder that she wanted to commit on Leon. But since that but since that plan backfired on her spectacularly, she ended up getting killed instead. But nevertheless, I was able to prove what actually happened in there, and Leon ended up getting executed for Saika's murder. And everybody got and everybody's been given another chance to live. Even though we've lost three people now, including Junko, who uh, def tried to defy Monokuma right before the investigation started. So even though mo most everybody is still alive, I can't really fault them for feeling less than p less than happy about their situation right now. Yeah, less than happy. I have such a way with words. So. I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and get things started and see what's gonna go on now that we got the class trial finished and start chapter two. Quite the cleanup, quite the impressive cleanup job, I would say. Frighteningly so. You wouldn't think that a murder just occurred here. gonna go ahead and look around the room a bit for mono, for mono coins like that one and that one Anything there to begin with. Every last sign of Saika's existence had to, has disappeared without a trace. It's just like he said. After the class trial, before we took the elevator back up, Monokuma told us. Uh -huh. Oh, I almost forgot. Since the class trial is over, I'll go ahead and dispose of all the corpses. What are you gonna do? It's okay, no need to thank me. Just seeing your delighted, smiling faces is thanks enough for me. After all, nobody wants to look at a rotting corpse every day. That can't be good for your health. <laughs> How generous of you. I didn't even have time to mourn Saika and Junko's deaths. I'm sure that's exactly why he did it. It's a bad joke. A sickening dream. But I have to accept the reality of it all. I head back to the dining hall to meet up with the others. Sorry I'm late. So, um... Hey. Are you okay, Mokoto? Listen to me! You sure took your sweet time! I was just about to go get you and drag you back here! Sorry. So? What happened? Was the room fixed up like he said? <laughs> I imagine it'd be pretty hard to sleep with a rotting corpse in your bathroom. Don't say that so cheerfully, man. That's morbid. Hey, come on. Jesus, that's fucked up, man. Why'd you say something like that? My room was... spotless. There wasn't anything left. Like the whole thing happened. I see. It must be tough staying there, knowing what happened. Why don't you stay in Saika's room? Well, 
staying there with her scent still hanging in the air. That would hurt just as much. Yeah, I can't. Un I can't. I, I honestly can't understand that. But at the same time, I would also argue her scent is gonna go away eventually. And well, you your room, despite what happened in there. All traces of the murder are gone now, so... I guess it really honestly doesn't matter which room you choose, I guess, so pick your poison. Plus... I decide that I can't turn away from her death. Hmm. Makoto... Um... Hey, cheer up! Gain to press isn't gonna help anything, right? If we all work together, I'm sure we'll find a way out of here! You got it! So everyone just... Try and cheer up and get back on track. Hm. Is that honestly supposed to make us feel better? Well, I would argue it's better than us sit sitting around just moping and being paranoid and suspicious about each other, but I mean, okay, fine. Huh? Let's just focus on that then. Huh? Hm. We already We were already working together, and yet someone was still murdered. Anyone could betray us at this point. Now that's happened once, it's a question of when, not if, the next one takes place. <laughs> yeah, because Saika made the first move. Well... But, if we work together against the Mastermind, nobody have any reason to do something like that. And it's just like I said... It's, like, it's, just, it's just like I said before in the last episode. It's not that simple. Especially not now, now that we got a murder, now that we had our first murder, as Byakuya and, and Toko pointed out. It would, if, if you could somehow manage to get everybody on board with working together against the Mastermind and swearing not to kill each other no matter what, yes, that could, the, that, that would derail the Mastermind's plans. But how likely do you think that's going to be? How realistic do you think that's going to be at this point to actually get that to happen? Very slim, I, I would say. Stop talking. Keep telling yourself that. I'll be over here in the real world. Working together, find a common enemy. Like it or not, it's not that simple. Um, what do you mean? Are you okay with this? The Mastermind seems to be much more powerful than we ever suspected. They took over Hope's Peak, which was supposed to be well defended, then modified it to fit their desire. They created Monokuma, which seems to be incredibly advanced, and they're providing for our every need. And the cherry on top is the execution we witnessed. Honestly. Everything has been planned down to the last excruciating detail. This is not the work of your everyday psychopath. Defying them may be too great a risk. That is indefinitely something to consider, yes, but at the same time, what other options do you have? It's either just do what exactly what they want and just keep whittling your numbers down, or you also do what the, what the Mastermind also suggested and just not kill each other at all and just live out your, the rest of your lives here. But again, I, as everybody just noted, myself included, fat chance of that happening at this point. So then. Then, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> Anyone who truly does want to escape will just have to follow the rules. <laughs> In which case, the only option is to deceive those around you and win the game. I, I repeat, that's not your only option. N no. What? No what? I... I can't take it. I don't want to live. If it means killing someone else to do it. I don't want to kill anyone else. Huh? Anyone... else? What do you mean? It's because... Leon died because we all voted for him, right? It's no different from us killing him ourselves. Well, the way I look at it is, while that may be true in a sense, it was either him or the rest of us. You know, greater, you know, greater the needs of the many and all that. But... But... So, 
If we hadn't voted for him, then we all would have died instead, right? That isn't what you wanted, is it? So it would seem. She's right. If you heap that kind of blame on yourself, you'll turn to a full-fledged masochist. Chira, listen. You're not to blame. Not you, not Leon, and not Saika. Well, I kind of still somewhat disagree with that, but go ahead, continue. The Mastermind is responsible for everything that's happened. We had no choice but to vote. I can't even imagine what would have happened to us if we refused. In the end, it was Monokuma who ultimately killed Leon! So don't waste your anger on yourself. Instead, direct it at the Mastermind! <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night. Oh, oh shit. And one other thing. Well, it's not a line dialogue we haven't heard before. It was totally obvious before that you were trying to make yourselves feel better and justify what you did. See you, see you, don't see you, see you. That's about how much I can see you, even when you try to hide. Now pay attention and remember this well. The burden of judging others is a heavy one to bear. So be well aware of your actions. Order and stability rely on the sacrifice and responsibility of everyone. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. What was that about just now? Basically, his way of telling you all, stop trying to make yourselves feel better. You all know that you're responsible for this. In a nutshell, that's what he was saying. Was he saying it's our fault what happened? It's pretty cruel, man. Don't fuck with me. That piece of shit. Who does he think he is? And so, the day drew to a close. A tense, maddening day that saw the deaths of three classmates. Saika, Junko, and Leon. But, this is just the beginning. Our despair has only just begun. Chapter 2, Boys' Life of Despair, Daily Life. I woke up the next day to Monokuma's normal morning announcement. Then he called us all to the gym. What's he going to do to us this time? We were practically frozen with fear, but Monokuma was determined to get us involved in his little game. And with that goal in mind, he began it. Okay, lift your arms up and down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now reach way up and bend way down. Tighten those muscles. Let's add a little strength, a little speed to those young bodies of yours. I think Hina has the best possible reaction out of everyone here to the, what's going on right now. Ah, doesn't this feel just great? Being stuck inside like this, you gotta make sure to stay healthy. You're the one keeping us stuck inside. <laughs> Don't sweat the small stuff. That's my motto. Yeah Whoa, I sound pretty cool just now, don't you think? No. Did you fall in love with me? Am I just to die for? Am I just to die in raggedy, writhing agony for? So? So. Why did you call us here? Certainly wasn't just to make us exercise. Yeah. Just to make you exercise? Just to make you exercise? Hey. If exercise makes you laugh, 
Exercise will make you cry. Now, if you keep doing these exercises, you will uncover the secret of the assassin's fist. <laughs> Passed down from generation to generation in the Empire of Darkness, the power can be yours. Hmm? That sounds like the kind of junk a, a middle schooler would come up with. Sounds better than a lot of the junk you write. It doesn't matter. Just get to the point. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Monokuma speaking. Doesn't matter. Just get to the point. Did you really call us down here just to exercise? Hey, um... Of course not. You think I have that kind of free time on my hands? Well, you certainly had the free time to sap this whole entire killing game, so I would think maybe a little. Okay, so then... Hmm. Uh, I'd like to make an announcement. Every time you overcome a class trial here at Hope's Peak, a whole new world will open up to you. What the heck? A whole new world. Yes, like the song from Aladdin. You guys? It'd really suck if you'd have to live here forever with nothing new to stimulate you. Besides, I know how you kids get these days with your ADD and ADHD. God, I gotta keep you motivated. Very nice. So go ahead, look around all you want. Enjoy the brave new post-trial world till you explode. With that, Monokuma disappeared even us even more confused than when he'd shown up. A new world. Could it be... Is he talking about... a way to get inside? Outside, excuse me. I wonder about that. That seems... unlikely. Piece of shit! Well, we, well, we don't know till we... Well, we don't know till we look! Hey! Whatever he meant, it seems we'll have to search the school one more time. You hear me? Okay, let's split up and start investigating. When you're done, everyone meet back up in the dining hall, and we'll share what we found. <laughs> you're basically a one-trick pony. You know that? Got it. Yeah. Well, you're. What are you? Yeah. Well, you're an old, worn-out, beaten-up shoe. More like a stable food source. Now let's get moving. Seeing his words as their signal. Everyone scattered and left the gym. Besides, if it's a good trick, then why then why fault the one trick pony? So let's uh get cracking, shall we? I'm gonna be exploring areas I've already looked at again, cause I'm cause there's going to be new monoco mono coins for me to pick up now that we start a new chapter. So it'll be a lot of retreading of places we've been to already, but I promise that's not all that's gonna result in this search. Someone's using these cameras to watch people die. Don't they have any shame at all? Well, clearly not enough. So what are you doing just standing here for? What the heck? Hey, Makoto! Did you see what's inside the display case? Bad. This is super bad, man! What are you talking about? I didn't notice anything all that weird in there. Hmm. Sure, to the untrained eye, it's nothing. But this is awful. A bad, awful, terrible trap. We're serious. That stuff you see lined up there? Any god could come by and use it to send a message. Huh? God, you sound so pitiful when you groan like that. And your facial expression right now isn't helping. <laughs> I've been struck with knowledge. It's an ill omen of total devastation and ruin. Let me out of here! Let me out! I have no idea what he's talking about, so maybe I'll just leave him alone. A good idea. So I see the samurai sword hasn't been replaced. Inside the display case are trophies and other items. Winning championships and stuff probably came naturally to anyone going to school here. 
Yeah, I, you would think, apparently. Kinda makes you... Never mind, I... I thought I had something to... I thought I had something, but then I lost it. God damn it. Makoto, look! The gate blocking the stairs is gone! It would seem a path to the second floor is opened up! But it's also of utmost importance to double check the areas we already know about, just in case. Without a doubt. Aren't I so clever to think of that? I really impress myself sometimes. You understand? No, that's not clever, that's just being thorough. Well, I'll leave the school to you. Indeed, you're right. Looks like we can go up to the second floor now. But before we do that, I'm going to do what he suggests, and we're going to check the first floor a bit first. Check around the school first. You need to find out what Maku meant, meant by New World. What do you think we're doing right now, genius? Okay, I guess we can't go in there right now. Yo. I wouldn't check the metal hatch in the main hall just to be sure, but... Dude, shit. Just like I figured, it hasn't moved an inch. Shit. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he made things that easy for hey, us. Damn it. Hey! What? Don't make that face. You look like a pussy. You want me to put some fine spirit in ya? Well, do ya? I got plenty. I don't need any more. No thanks. I think I've got enough for now. Yo. Well, okay. I'm gonna go look for another way out then. This shot of yours might be cool. Might look good on. Might look cool if it wasn't for your fucking hair. I just want to put that out there. Come on, you won't even let me come check out the damn school store. I got coins! I can spend shit! Come on, man. Okay, fine. It's obvious they want me to go up to the second floor first, so fuck it. Why not? The gate that was blocking the stairs has been opened. Is this what Makuma meant by a new world? So, what's up there? This is the second floor of the school. Maybe there's some kind of clue here. Yeah, I'm sure of it. There's gotta be something here. So, let's look at our map. We got two classrooms down at the very bottom, but on opposite ends of the map. Going by the book symbol in that big room sandwiched right between them, that ha that obviously has to be the library. We got two bathrooms to our right, and going by what we see up above, swimming pool with locker rooms. It's not much, but something. Well, I guess in terms of room quantity, I guess, but, Just you know. a second. Hey, Makoto! Hey! Oh, Makoto, hey, guess what? Guess what I found? A pool! There's a pool here! A pool! Pool, pool, pool! I bet you're real happy about that, aren't you? You don't have to keep repeating it, I got it. Okay. And there's a ton of exercise equipment in the locker room. Sakura's gonna go nuts when she finds out. Yeah, you're right about that. He seems way more excited than usual. Well, she is an athletic swimmer. She now has found something that's more within her element, so I would hope that she's at least somewhat happy. Okay. Locker rooms connect to a pool. It looks super nice. And big. And fantastic to swim in. Uh, I'm beyond excited right now. I can't wait to dive in! In fact, I'm getting kinda of mad thinking about it! Why are you getting mad? Stop stealing my line, salting cracker. Is that... a real gun? Considering literally everything we've seen up until now, and Leon's execution especially, I think we can safely assume that that is indeed a real fucking Gatling gun. Like the kind you'd see on fighter jets. It's not like we're at war here. Why would we need something like this, like that here? 
Well, it is pointing right at the bathroom door. I mean, locker room doors, excuse me. So, security. There are a bunch of different pool-related items on the shelf. And a loose coin for us to pick up. It looks like one of those lifesaver flotation donuts. Monitors. So, what you got for us, Cheerio? Hey, Chihiro, have you checked out the pool yet? Uh, um... No. I don't like wearing swimsuits. Yeah, you do seem like the type who might not be into that kind of thing. But... But still, it sounds like the locker rooms here have all the exercise equipment you could ask for. Maybe I'll give it a try. I'd like to get a little stronger. You want to get stronger? I just say, that's kind of unexpected. Yeah. But I'm not even brave enough to step foot into the locker room. Huh? You don't even want to go in the locker room. Um... It's not that I don't want to. It's just... Peer pressure. Well, I guess peer pressure doesn't quite work in this, but something like that. I don't get it. Is she afraid of locker rooms or something? It's a pretty weird phobia, though. So, Celeste, what do you got for us? <laughs> the second floor has opened up. The living area has grown, and a number of facilities are now available. Whatever else is going on, I must admit, things have been made much more comfortable for us. Which, to me, is a double-edged sword, personally, because... Well, on one hand, we now have more comfortable living arrangements, but on the other hand, the fact that we got more, more comfortable living arrangements as a result of the murder, that, uh, the murder in class trial that we just finished, could, in of itself, prove to be an incentive for some of us to start killing each other. If you know, some of us care about, uh, you know, living uh, living the conditions that badly to where somebody will eventually go stir-crazy at some point because they want more space or something. And so they'll kill someone. But I guess on the other hand, well, if by that, by that point, they would be trying to get the hell out of here anyway. So, yeah, I guess it really... I guess we really don't need to worry about that. Do you understand? If things continue like this, the occasional class trial may not be so bad. <laughs> Don't think like that, man. You're making me worried. Is this some kind of card reader? I wonder what it's for. Pardon me, ladies, but I need to snoop and investigate. Behind this door is... The locker room. <laughs> this is the girls' locker room. This is fine. A true gentleman will respect our space, yes? Well, when you play like that, how can I how can I refuse? Is this some kind of card reader? I wonder what it's for. Okay, I did just Okay. Alright, let's try going in. Behind the store is the locker room. Yeah! Oh, and I guess you need your handbook to get into the locker rooms. Really? Of course! Really, really. Oh. Wah! Hmm. If you want to unlocker the locker room, you'll have to swipe your personal e handbook across the card reader next to the door. Uh-huh. However, to ensure maximum security within each locker room. Only a boy's handbook can open the boy's locker room, and the same goes for the girls. And that's the bottom line. But... Hmm. What if someone opens the door, and then someone else sneaks in? Anyone who commits such indecency will be punished without mercy for their scandalous sexual depravity. You're the last person that should be talking about sexual depravity. 
because you seem to kind of get off on all of us just offing each other. Not in that way, you perverts. See, there's a Gatling gun mounted on the ceiling, right? Yahoo! And I'll be ducka 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 ducka. Just a second. I bet it really hurt to get shot by that thing. Well, if it's any consolation, you'd probably be dead in a matter of seconds, so it'd probably be a very quick death. Um... Worst case scenario. Um, no. I think it'd be a little worse than that. Hmm. But what happens if someone loans their handbook to someone else? A boy could borrow a girl's handbook, and that would get them into the girl's locker room, would it not? <laughs> Whoa! That never even occurred to me! To think someone could be so low, so cowardly, so devilish. Well, considering that we're playing a literal death game here that you set up here, I think people peeping in on each other is probably the least of our concerns. I mean, let's be perfectly honest here. I mean, our, I think our lives are a little more important than that. Hmm. Okay, then how's this sound? I got it. It's time for a new rule. As of this moment, loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Well, there you go. I guess that solves that problem. <laughs> there. So now nobody can give their handbook to anyone else, right? You like that? I'm kind of a genius, right? It's because my brain is 100% cotton. I don't see it in here yet. Honestly. I do not imagine anyone would have lent their handbook out in the first place. Is that okay? After all, they would likely be held responsible for anything that person might do using the handbook. So, um... But you know, you seem awfully concerned with all this locker room security stuff. Of course! It's because all you teenagers are sex-crazed maniacs! You're at that age, you try humping a plastic bottle! So to keep anything uh, anything unseemly from happening, I have to maintain a rigorous watch. Yeah, a rigorous watch. Sure. Nothing, um, no ulterior modes behind that, right? <laughs> then in that case, I would ask that you keep the same close, uh, close eye on our dorms. If some man and some woman decide to share a room, there would be nothing to stop them. Well, I, well, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, unless someone's going in there to murder somebody, is it really anybody's business in there what a man and a woman does in a man or a woman's room, if it's all consensual? <laughs> all I care about is protecting the holy image of the school itself. Disgusting. <laughs> the contempt in that word was just palpable. I love it. I don't care what happens in your private dorms. By force or by cunning, do whatever you want. Just the worst. I hate you so much. See ya later. Okay, so new regulation is now in place. See ya. <sighs> well, you heard you heard it from the bear. The fucking can only take place in the dormitories. Man, that stupid bear totally ruined my mood. I'm gonna go take a dip to cheer myself up. You got it! Celeste, Chihiro, you wanna come with me? As for me. There is nothing I hate more than getting water on my face. Then you must only take baths then. I uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'll pass this time. How come? When you're in a funk, there's nothing better than a good swim to pull you out of it. Well, personally I think a hot shower works just as well. Pretty sure that only applies to you. All right, let's try go going in here now. See what we got here in this good old locker room of ours. Very basic shit. Even right down to the wall poster here. We even got a little black void on the other side of the room. How long am I going to be stuck here, being watched by all these cameras? Starting for information from the outside world. 
when there was a TV that worked. I like how, out of everything that's in here, the only things we can look at are the camera, the monitor, and this poster. Not much interests you in terms of fitness, huh, huh Mr. Salting Cracker? Now this is an interesting poster. Obviously someone put this in the school, but is it really okay to have something like this here? Well, if it's in here, I guess Monokuma must be a-okay with it. But then again, wouldn't it? Monokuma was going on just a minute ago about maintaining the holy image of the school, so he so he's put it. I guess this poster, by definition of being here inside a school facility room, is a holy image. Okay, Makoto, I need you to get down on your knees, kneel, and pray before the bikini-clad woman in the poster. Pray for salvation. Maybe she'll grant it to you. I'm just kidding, of course. I don't think she'd really bother with you anyway. Got this locker here. Lockers. Well, I would expect to see that in any normal pool. Hmm. Now this entire pool area, only the locker can be looked at. We can't even look at the boys and girls' records. What an absolute disappointment. Farewell, poster lady. Fitness room. And farewell, Cheerio. Celeste. And idiot swimmer girl. Not not my nickname for her, Tokos. But no, I don't really think you're an idiot, Hina. Toko was just being mean to you back in the class trial. Oh, whoops. This is a girl's bathroom. If I ever took one step in there, I'd become a total creep in everyone's eyes. And that'd be it for me. Yeah, you would. This is where the bathroom clean supplies are stored. I don't see anything useful in here. Hmm... Okay, we got our first classroom right here. Hello there, Sakura. How you doing? I see. This must be what he meant by a new world. Huh. I should probably take a really close look around. The baby is sleeping. Please be quiet. What baby? I know it's pointless, but I can't stop looking at the clock. You knew the time was wrong, I wouldn't have any way of knowing. I really don't like that. I'm gonna buy a shit ton of gifts for all of you. It's Phelan's camera. Well, mostly two of you, because there's only two people I really want to focus on right now anyway. They're watching every single move we make. Uh -huh. And of course, these windows are bolted shut as well. Because I shouldn't be surprised, but on the second floor too. The windows here have the same those same metal plates covering them. In any normal classroom, this would be where it wouldn't be, but the windows here are, yeah. I guess before I go check out the library here, I hold on. Did I just pass over anybody? No, I did not. I'm gonna go check out this art classroom first. Reality isn't everything. Imagine Monokuma is shaped more like an actual bear. That might actually be a little scary.
There we go. All right, trying to get try, time for me to go into an area that's more of my element. The library. One of the best places that someone like me could be in. How long am I gonna need? Okay, you're just gonna say the same stuff, so I'll just look at these. So. What have you all found here? But still, this library is most interesting. Huh? What's interesting about it? Stop talking. Oh, nothing. I was just thinking out loud. Whatever, man. I'm absolutely shocked. How come? Damnation! They have all these books here, and not one copy of any of my works! This doesn't look like the sort of place that would hold manga, so I'm not surprised there. Well, yeah. Why would they have comics in a library? Well, hey, on my public library, hey, every public library I've ever been to is, has comics of some kind in there. <laughs> Plus, most fanfic is just porn drawn by a bunch of amateurs. No, it's not. Come on, don't don't lump every don't lump everybody in like that, man. You just don't get it, not at all. <laughs> I do too get it. And with a face like yours, anyone can tell nothing you do is worthwhile. Say whatever you want about me, but never judge a book by its author. Well, if the book in question is trying to make a statement on behalf of something that an author believes in or something like that, then yes, you totally can judge a book by its author. Otherwise, if not, and they're just, you know, I don't know, writing a piece of fiction or something just to entertain you or whatever, then yes, you could, sep you could very well separate the art from the artist without much issue, in my opinion. It all it, it basically it all depends on what exactly the uh, author, or creator, or whatever is creating their work for. What's the, what their intention is. Now hear this: appearances mean nothing at all. What you see before you is nothing more than the rind that contains the meaty pulp of my genius. Here we go. My creations are what determine my meaning and value. <laughs> so full of it. Well, show me one of your creations, and then I will determine your value. Mm -hmm. But if I need brain bleach after all that, I will hold you personally responsible. Or if I'll at least foot you the bill for the bleach. Hm. I'm used to being misunderstood. You think weak attacks like yours will drop my HP? Those two really worry me. Eh, I'm not that worried, personally. The shelf is packed tight with books, but looking at it, the whole thing is incredibly dusty. Looks like this library has been neglected for a pretty long time. You know it's a prestigious school. They've been pretty careless about keeping it nice. I think the coin disagrees with us. It gave us a nice big old nice right above it. go. Good old desk right here. There's a thick layer of dust on top of the desk. Write something funny while there's still dust. It looks like this library has been neglected for a pretty long time. As nice as the school itself is, whoever's in charge of upkeep has been pretty lazy. Strange. All right, Toko, what you got for me? You must be pretty happy to have all these books around, huh, Toko? 
Not particularly. Nothing's really caught my attention so far. Mm -hmm. Indeed. There's a plethora of books, it's true. But the content seems... Lacking. No, nothing. Where's the comic books? Where's the ad young adults young adult section? Huh? Comic books? Young adult? That stuff's a waste of time. Hmm. Hmm. I've seen hmm. what you write, Miss hmm. Bukawa. Talented as you are, your stuff isn't any more worthwhile. I think literally the entire world disagrees with you on that one, Ifumi. I mean, she is called the ultimate uh, novelist for a reason. What the heck? Or romance novelist, so one, one, or, one or the other. My stories are filled with true love and pure feelings. Don't compare them to that garbage of yours. Your writing doesn't even mean anything. It's just a bunch of jumbled up letters. Someone should just burn it all. Hey, 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 Toko. I can understand his tastes not being aligned with your own, believe me, but book burnings are not okay. No matter what the book is, that's just something an authoritarian would do. <laughs> Ooh, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. I bet you're secretly into boy on boy action. <laughs> boy on boy? I don't care if it's anime or comics or fanfic or whatever. It's all filth! Throwaway culture that'll be trashed and forgotten in half a decade! Well, I strongly disagree with you on that one, but I mean, hey, you do you. Ugh. Talking about it makes me sick to my stomach. I feel like I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> you've insulted me, and you've insulted my honor! What honor? These two are really starting to freak me out. I've never seen anything like it. Again, I'm not too worried. They can just bitch and moan to each other about written works of fiction however, as much as they like. It's got nothing to do with me. It's remarkably dusty in here, and the lighting is less than ideal. For a library, it's not the kind of place I'd want to do much reading in. Well, somebody get me a feather duster and I'll get right to it. I used to, I used to upkeep libraries once upon a time. It looks like a laptop. The laptop looks pretty old. Uh, old, old. What the fuck is uh, old? It's all covered in dust. So. It's broken. I tried pressing the power button earlier, but nothing happened broken, huh? Too bad. I was hoping I could use it to go online and see what's going on in the outside world. Well, if there's no Wi-Fi signal, it really wouldn't matter even if the thing could work. If it's broken, there's nothing I can really do about it. So, what's this little envelope that's just been sitting here trying to grab our attention? The shelf is covered in dust. But on the shelf is... A letter. What's this? It says Hope Speak Office on the on the envelope. Hope Speak Academy. Indeed. It was buried under a thick layer of dust. It must have been sitting there for quite a while. Well, shall we see what's inside? But we shouldn't read other people's mail without their permission. Is that right? What we shouldn't do is leave this here without finding out what's inside. Okay, I agree with Kyoko. I broke the seal on the dusty envelope and pulled out the single sheet of paper I found inside. I unfolded the paper and read what was written there. From the Hope's Peak Academy Executive Office. Throughout the years, we have been committed to shaping the youth who will one day shape the world. We have a long, proud history as an institution of higher learning with full governmental support. Our graduates enter society ready to take an on active leadership roles in every major job field. However, Hope's Peak Academy must now lower the curtain on its glorious history for the time being. 
This decision was not e an easy one to make, but serious issues beyond our control had made it necessary. But make no mistake, this is not the end for Hope's Peak Academy. We intend to reopen our doors as soon as the issues forcing our closure have been resolved. That being said, this is the end for now. And I'd like to personally, th personally and sincerely thank everyone for your help and support over the years. For now, we are awaiting official government authorization to formally cease operations. What does this mean? Well, going by the contents of the letter, Mr. Saltless Salting Cracker, it would seem to me that at some point, Hope's Peak Academy had closed down due to some unforeseen circumstances outside of their control. Now the real question we should be asking is, when exactly did it close down? Hmm. Hmm. The contents of this letter are quite interesting indeed. It would seem... It would seem Hope's Peak had stopped functioning as a school. And judging by the amount of dust the letter had collected, it doesn't seem to have happened, rec have happened recently. If I had to guess, I'd say this letter could be at least a year old. Now that right there is quite a mystery, because if this letter is authentic, and it's as, as, and it's as old as you say it is, then why were we? Then why was everybody able to sign up, for, sign up for, and get and get chosen and picked into Hope's Peak Academy? Because after all, from from what from what we could see, it really it's only been like what maybe a week or two since this whole mess started before ever before Makoto and, and everybody else walked into these gates, and we found ourselves in the in this death game. So how then was the school still functioning? if it was already closed down. So, you're saying Hope's Peak closed down at least a year ago? <laughs> Most likely the mastermind took over the abandoned school in order to put on this little performance. But that would mean it was closed when I got here just a few days ago. Yeah, see, not that long ago. But I didn't get that sense at all. Plus, if the school had shut down, don't you think it would have been all in all the newspapers and stuff? I mean, you're saying it could have happened over a year ago, right? Before I got here, I looked up online about the school. I never saw anything about this. So, in other words... That must have all been part of the Mastermind's plan. They lured us all in here. That's... quite the operation, I must say. Someone who could create a place to judge and execute people who could potentially be capable of anything. Hm. Of course, that's all assuming this letter is real. However... If it is real, though, it does solve one mystery surrounding the school. The reason there are no other students here could be because the school had already closed down. Hm. That would be a nice, simple solution, if true. Yes, but that wouldn't necessarily explain why were we brought here, exactly. But then, what about this other part? This decision was not an easy one to make, but serious issues beyond our control have made it necessary. But make no mistake, this is not the end for Hope's Peak Academy. We tend to reopen our doors as soon as the issues forcing our closure have been resolved. What did they mean by serious issues? That's apparently why the school had to close. Is there any connection between that and what's happening to us now? No, if... If the two events are in fact connected, uncovering that connection would be a useful clue, on top of figuring out the Mastermind's motive. Although I can't really say any more until we find out more deta- find more details. Hmm. So in other words, only the Mastermind knows the truth right now. Mastermind's motive. If we can figure out why they would want to imprison us all here, will that be enough to get us out of here? Or... Anyway, now I have a pretty good idea of what's on the second floor. But I didn't see anything that might lead to any kind of exit or anything. We still got that little door back there to look in behind. All we can do now is hope someone fi found something worthwhile. Okay, I better head back to the dining hall as soon as possible. Listen to me! 
me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how'd it go? Did anyone discover any n interesting new anything? Yes, indeed. There's a library. Okay. And a pool. A freaking pool. And locker rooms filled with exercise equipment. Well. There was not, however, anything resembling an escape route. Yeah. She's right. I see. Well, hey, there's no reason to get all sulky. Wait till you hear about my amazing discovery. Quiet down and listen. The warehouse and bathhouse on the first floor of the dorms are now open. You hear me? And the warehouse is chock full of food, clothes, whatever, at whatever you want. There's so much, it's insane. <laughs> so go ahead and stuff yourself to the gills whenever you feel like. Ha ha ha. Are you okay with this? Keep in mind, of course, that going out at nighttime is still prohibited. Please do not forget. Yo. Okay. And what about a fucking and what about a fucking way out of here? You find anything like that? Oh. Well, um, didn't we just say we we didn't find anything that looked like an exit? What? What? There wasn't anything in the warehouse we could use to get our asses out of here. Nothing. Unfortunately, no. Not that I saw. Hey, come on. You fucking people. What? Who gives a shit if we have a goddamn pool now? Or a warehouse or whatever the fuck? Stop fucking around. We're still trapped in this piece of shit school. We need to find a, go a goddamn way out. <laughs> now, now. There is no point in taking your anger out on us. Adaption is the key, yes? For now, we must each find a way to enjoy our current situation. You piece of... Whatever you say, you fucking loon. <clears throat> For now, let's just continue our investigation. And let everyone know if you discover you should discover something. So then... So, are we done for today? Y yeah. Well, yeah, I guess so. It's okay, Taka. I'm sure you'll get your fine spirit back within minutes. The air seemed to suddenly grow heavy again. Was this the Mastermind's plan? To give us hope? Just to turn around and betray that hope? A likely possibility. Why are you being all silent there in the corner, Byakuya? Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. We all promised not to leave our rooms during night time. There's not much, there's much else to do. I guess I'll just go to bed. So what kind of nonsensical philosophical spiel that you got for us now, Mani? Mr. Monokuma. Mr. Monokuma, do you have a second? I... I don't really like myself. I don't have any kind of skill or hobby I can say I'm super good at. And my grades are totally average, too. My reflexes are okay. Not great. Not awful. I could get into a decent college, where I'd make a few friends. Maybe even find a normal girlfriend. Which is exactly, which is exactly why I don't like who I am. I understand that now. My life is just one, is one giant copy-paste. I don't have any imagination. I'm a perfectly average cardboard cutout. You see what I mean, right, Mr. Monokuma? This feels like one massive jab at Mr. Saltine Cracker. Poor Saltine Cracker. As bl as bland as the as the factory workers that made him uh, that made him. Actually, no, the factory workers would have more depth than Good just a plain morning, old saltless salt and cracker. It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day. 
Oh, that's right. I wanted to let you know that your e-handbooks have been updated. New regulations have been added, so please take a look and enjoy your school life more than ever before. The new rule has been added to the regulations menu. He must be referring to yesterday. Loading your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Sure enough. Strictly prohibited. And 11, additional school regulations may be added as necessary. But right now I need to hurry up and head to breakfast. Hmm. Alright, let's just go on ahead and get on over there. Who's out here? Nobody! Saika. No. I can't waste time, time on sentimentality now. The others must be waiting for me in the dining hall. Well, I want to go check out a couple places before we head in there, so fuck off. Fine, I guess we're gonna go to the dining hall first, you impatient little snob. Forgive me for wanting to go sniff out more coins. Hey, Makoto. Morning, Makoto. Good morning. Is everyone here already? Yo, yo, yo! Nope! Still waiting on Byakuya and Taka. Yago is no surprise, but strange Taka is not here yet. <laughs> Knowing Taka, I imagine he's trying to get the king of tardiness up and out of bed. Hmm. I'm sure he'll be here soon enough. Just be patient. Let's see. I don't mind waiting for them, but there is one problem. Which is... <sighs> I am thirsty. Then you can go ahead and get up and get yourself a drink, can't you? Hey, come on! What the hell is that a problem? <laughs> he fooled me. Would you make me some tea? Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> Milk tea, if you please. Well... Why me? Let's see... Your roundish figure reminds me of the owner of the coffee shop I used to frequent. That's your reason? This is fine. I can feel my throat drying out. Quickly, please. Oh, um... Okay. Have a backbone, man. Tell her to make it herself. She's not your master. Apparently unable to refuse the last order, Fumi skulked his way into the kitchen. And a few minutes later... <laughs> Thank you for waiting! Ifumi reappeared with tray in hand. The gentle aroma growing stronger as he approached. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> could have made some for the rest of us, you know. If you wanted some, Toko, you could have spoken up. There's no way to think about this in a common sense kind of way. Whatever you say, Fumi. I emphatically de could decline. You're not my type at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the law of causality. Basically, an instinct. Act and react. Wait a minute, Hifumi. I thought you weren't into 3D. And last I checked, by your definition, Celeste is 3D. Even though we kind of already saw it as in the class trial that everybody is technically 2D. Well then, if you don't mind. A small smile played across her lips as she held the teacup delicately in her hand. Oh! Wait. She cocked her head to the side and threw the cup as hard as she could at the wall. That was rude. What? What the? Hey! What are you doing, my little white rabbit? Why are you calling her that? I hate this kind of tea. Um, um I don't understand. Yes, indeed. Imagine Imagine we are at a coffee shop. Just any normal everyday cafe. I sit down and I order some tea. Then they then ask me, would you like lemon or milk? 
Now, further imagine that I replied, Ah yes, I would like milk tea, please. In this case, along with my tea, they may bring me a small container of milk, yes? <sighs> but this is not for me. I am among those who prefer the milk to be part of the process from the outset. The fragrance is just so overwhelmingly sweet that way. Adding milk or lemon right before you drink is like dousing your fries in ketchup. Mere condiments! Yeah, but your analogy doesn't quite work for me because you're technically talking about mixing condiments during the actual brewing process, so... It'd be kind of like baking ketchup into fr into your fries as you're cooking them up or something, you know? I mean, I, I, it's not... It's not working for me, but whatever. Whenever looking for a cafe, I first review their menu to see if it offers the proper style of milk tea. And I cannot acknowledge any milk tea that does not add the milk during the brewing process. So picky. If I had to describe our shared reaction to what we just heard, I'd have to go with wide-eyed bewilderment. Well, that's all that's all you. Me, it's just a raised eyebrow. Um, I went to all that trouble to make you that tea. And you wanted me to go even farther? <sighs> yes, I realize it can be a bit of a hassle. Even in cafes that offer proper milk tea, it is always more expensive than simple tea with milk. Now that's what I don't quite understand. If you're how is it more exp how is it more expensive brewing the milk and the tea together than the other way around if you were giving your tea and milk separately? I mean, the same volume more or less would still be involved, right? So Yeah, I'm no expert on this sort of shit here, so forgive me, forgive me for my ignorance. It takes more time to prepare, surely, but why even bother creating a menu if you are not going to offer the highest level of quality? Try asking that to every cheap fast food restaurant on the planet. I don't think they really care about quality, just giving you some just giving you something to stuff down your gullet. Well, um, we don't actually have a menu. You little bitch! Oh boy, she's getting angry. That does not matter! Hurry up and bring me what I asked for, swine! Say what? What? Yay! That little squeal. Okay, you little piggy will bring it right out. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I do so love coercion. Huh? You were like a totally different person just now. Yeah, shit. Yeah, shit. You really went psycho there. Well, she didn't have that many angry veins in her eyeballs, did she? Hmm. <laughs> I knew there was more to her when I first met her. I hate to have her as an enemy. Eh, I wouldn't be worried. You just gotta know how to get under uh, get under her skin. And clearly, as we just saw, giving her the wrong type of drink is one of those methods. So. That's one round of ammunition for me, sister. Seriously, man. She's one scary chick. You're all cowards, every one of you. I'm not scared of her. The dining hall doors flew open, and one of the late arrivals came storming in. But... Bad news, everyone. There is a mystery afoot. Huh? What happened? It would seem Byakuya refuses to leave his room. I stood there pressing his doorbell over and over, but he never showed himself. Maybe he just... wasn't there? I think maybe... I'd like to think so, but I'm worried something might have happened to him. What he meant by that... He didn't have to say anything else. Everyone understood exactly what that might mean. It might be a good idea if we all split up and go look for him. Listen to me! Ah, I was just about to suggest the same thing! What's your problem? Stop trying to one-up everyone! Um... Okay, then I'll go check his room one more time. 
I'm just gonna keep on hammering that button until I get a response. Well then. Very well. And the rest of us can go check the rest of the building. Uh, um. Yeah, before it's, you know, too late. Anyway, we have to do our best to find Biakuya. So where might have Biakuya, where might like, Biakuya have gone? Maybe he went to go check out the second floor of the school again. And of course, you're just sitting here by yourself, I guess, waiting for your tea, right? I'm sure that's why you're still here. Anyway, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut things off here, and we can go look for Byakuya in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time. Take care.